Hello, let's begin one more session on multivariate calculus integration. Now, in the last lecture session, we have seen the application of double integrals in finding area of a bounded region in the xy plane. Today's session, we will see application of double integrals in finding volume of a bounded region in the three-dimensional space. So how can we do that? For that, let us remember that we have already seen that the double integral fxy dx dy over a region omega gives the volume of the solid that is bounded by the region of integration omega at the base and by the surface z equal to fxy at the top. So we will now use this concept to find the volume of regions in the three-dimensional space. Let us start with an example. Find the volume of the tetrahedron bounded by the planes x equal to 0, z equal to 0, x equal to 2y and x plus 2y plus z equal to 2. So let us draw the tetrahedron first. So the four faces of the tetrahedron are given by x equal to 0. That means the yz plane. One face is lying over here. The z equal to 0. That means the xy plane. So we have the second face of the tetrahedron here on the xy plane. x equal to 2y. So this is this face which cuts the xy plane in this straight line x equal to 2y and the fourth phase is this plane x plus 2y plus z equal to 2 and of course this now cuts the xy plane in this straight line which is going to be x plus 2y equal to 2 because z is 0 over here okay so now the volume of the tetrahedron may be obtained by evaluating this double integral fxy dx dy where we will integrate over this base region omega and what is the base region omega over here let us look carefully the base region omega on the xy plane is nothing but this triangle the triangle with the sides y axis that means x equal to 0 x equal to 2y and the third one here is x plus 2y equal to 2. So now to evaluate the double integral, our next task is to find the limits of x and y such that this base region omega is covered. So let us first draw this region on the xy plane and try to find the limits of x and y. And if we now treat it as a type 1 region, see that y will vary along this vertical strip from the lower curve y equal to x by 2 to the upper curve x plus 2y equal to 2 or rather y equal to 1 minus x by 2. And what are the limits of x? See that the minimum value of x lies on the y-axis that is x equal to 0 and the maximum value will be x equal to 1 which we can easily find out by finding the point of intersection of these two straight lines, which is one and half. So once again, the limits of y are going to be from x by 2 to 1 minus x by 2, and the limits of x are going to be from 0 to 1. So therefore, we can say that this required volume lies under the graph of the function z equal to 2 minus x minus 2y. Why? Because the top surface will be the plane x plus 2y plus z equal to 2. So we can say that the top surface of the volume produced will be z equal to 2 minus x minus 2y and the base will be this region omega given by the set of points x, y where x varies from 0 to 1 and y varies from x by 2 to 1 minus x by 2. So, therefore, the required volume is now given by this double integral fxy dx dy over omega, where fxy or z is 2 minus x minus 2y and we are integrating first with respect to y 
from the limits x by 2 to 1 minus x by 2 and then with respect to x from 0 to 1. So as we do the inner integral, we see that we get 2y minus xy minus y square. We next put the limits from x by 2 to 1 minus x by 2. So as we will put the limits, we will get an expression like this and then this has to be integrated with respect to x from 0 to 1. As you simplify this expression, we are going to get x square minus 2x plus 1 and we integrate with respect to x. So this is x cubed by 3 minus x square plus x and we put the limits from 0 to 1. The final answer is 1 by 3, which therefore gives the volume of the given tetrahedron. Okay, so let's look into one more example. Find the volume of the unit sphere. Now, perhaps all of us know the volume of a sphere. But now let us try to find it out by applying the theory of double integrals. So, of course, let us draw the figure first. So, here we have a sphere and its unit sphere, so the radius is 1. So, therefore, the equation of the sphere, as it's all known to us, is x square plus y square plus z square equal to 1. Now, because of symmetry, we will find out the volume of the upper hemisphere, and then we can multiply the result by 2. So, the equation of the upper hemisphere is z equal to root over 1 minus x square plus y square. Now see, if we want to find the double integral fx y dx dy to get the volume of this upper hemisphere, see that your function fx y or z is of course this root over 1 minus x square plus y square. And what will be the base region? We can easily see that the base region will be this circle on the xy plane. And what is the equation of this circle? Of course, as we put z equal to 0, it's going to be x squared plus y squared equal to 1. Now, so let us evaluate the double integral, but we see that because the base region is a circle, it will be convenient to use polar coordinates x equal to r cos theta and y equal to r sine theta. So, as we will apply polar coordinates, see that the equation of the upper hemisphere or this z becomes root over 1 minus r square, right? So this is our function now, z r theta root over 1 minus r square. And what will be the limits of r? Of course, it's a unique circle. So r will vary from 0 to 1 and theta will vary from 0 to 2 pi. So therefore, the volume of the upper hemisphere can now be written as this is your z root over 1 minus r square. And we know that dx dy in polar coordinates is r dr d theta. So we have to now evaluate this integral over r where r is the circle. So we put the limits of r and theta so that the region r is covered. And that is r is going from 0 to 1 and theta is going from 0 to 2 pi. Now we have actually separated the integrals and this 0 to 2 pi d theta of course gives us 2 pi. So we are left with evaluating this integral 0 to 1 root over 1 minus r square r dr. Now I think we can easily observe that we need a substitution now. So we put 1 minus r square equal to t. So this gives us minus 2 r dr equal to dt. Now note that in the lower limit, when r equal to 0, t equal to 1. And in the upper limit, when r is equal to 1, t is equal to 0. So let us now find the volume of the upper hemisphere, which is given by 2 pi integral 0 to 1 root over 1 minus r square r dr. And as per our substitution, root over 1 minus r square will be root over t r dr is now replaced by minus dt by 2 and the limits of t are from 1 to 0. So this gives us minus pi 0 to 1 root over t dt or otherwise pi 0 to 1 
root t dt. As we integrate this root t or t to the power half, we get t to the power 3 by 2 divided by 3 by 2. And as we put the limits from 0 to 1, we get the answer as 2 pi by 3. So this is the volume of the upper hemisphere. And therefore, the volume of the unit sphere is given by 2 times 2 pi by 3, that is 4 pi by 3, our very well-known result. With this, we will close today's session. In the next session, we will see some more applications of double integrals in finding center of mass or gravity. So, thank you and goodbye till then.